Hi, I'm Kim Brown. Glad you could join me today. I love connecting people with other people and with resources that will show them and help them to be aware that they really can change their mind. I believe that we're designed with the ability to change our minds and that our minds are, are designed to change. And when I become emotionally healthy, emotionally intelligent, not only does it help me, it's helping my neighbor as well, even though he doesn't know it. So the more people who can be aware that this is possible, the better as far as I'm concerned. And I have just recently received a new resource that I would like to share with you. Mind change, it's probably backwards to you, but it says changing the world one mind at a time by Heather McKean. And Heather is with us today. Welcome, Heather. Thanks, Kim. I'm so excited to be here. It's been a long time coming. We've known each other for quite a few years. Yes, so, yes. I'm watching your work, admiring your work, and what you've been doing. So it's really an honor and a privilege to be here. So thanks for having me. Thank you so much. I enjoyed reading your book. I know there was one just little phrase in there that you said, rumination plus declaration equals creation. And I thought, oh my goodness, how true is that? It just, it hit me in a new way. Um, so I thank you for that. And I thank you for this book. I think it's an awesome resource. I've already shared it with quite a few of my clients. Mm, thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> and Heather's telling me that you also are going to have the opportunity starting August 1st, right? That's right. To see a mini series that she and Tiffany Jeffers have filmed. So tell us just a little bit about that before we get started on our interview. Absolutely. So uh, the series is called The Healing Tribe, and it's going to be premiering on Pure Flix. There may be other ways to see it, but something wonderful that Pure Flix is doing is with this series, they're offering a free trial. So you can sign up for a free trial and then binge watch our series. And hopefully you'll love their content and want to stay a member. But if, I mean, obviously they, they really just want this to get out to as many people as possible. So this is with uh, Andrea Logan White, her and her husband, David White, they run Pure Flix. They, they did the movie uh, God's Not Dead, many other movies that I think, uh, you know, people might be familiar with. And they are just, they're wonderful people, wonderful couple. Uh, I worked with Andrea, gosh, it's been about three years ago, I believe, as a client. She actually flew out here to Maui. We had some intensives. And really the idea of this was birthed then because, you know, she was so moved and impressed and had so many wonderful uh, changes in her life that she really wanted this to get out to as many people as possible. And uniquely, obviously, they come from a Christian perspective and platform. And something she was very... Uh, conscious about and wanted to be really careful about was, is this what we were doing together? Is this work um, biblically based? Is it, does it have a, you know, biblical mindset and, and basis behind it? So that was the beauty of us working together because that's really always been my heart and, and my personal experience in the work that I do. So she, she talked about doing this and, hey, I should come out to Maui and we should film something. And at the time I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this was all filmed uh, actually here on Maui in April. Really what we wanted to do was from a Bible-based platform, explain the work that I do. This was right before I published my book. And so a lot of it was, you know, really fresh for me and just, it was so exciting to be able to share this and to share all of our similar journeys, but really to what I like to say, open a conversation about this, because I think it's a relevant conversation right now. And so that's, that's really what we hope this series does is open up conversation. And it's really us sharing 
pieces that we've learned in our journey and Andrea shares kind of where she's at in her journey. And then we really discuss, uh, the way that I like to sum it up is it's the brain body Bible connection. Uh -huh. And so that's what that's going to be about. And that airs August 1st on Pure Flix. So you can check that out, uh, www.pureflix.com. Um, some information's on our social media and everything as well. Okay. And I'll also put all that information at the end of this interview as well. Fabulous. That's great. It's actually a 15 episode talk show series. Oh, great. So they're rather bite sized. We tried to keep them small at one time. So I think the maximum is 17 minutes per episode but it's just, it is chock full of incredible information. We started it gonna be eight episodes. <laughs> so much information that it, it morphed into 15 and there's, you know, there's still more of this conversation to be had, but it's a good starter. Well, very good. I would like to address a few questions today that you may address in your mini series, but they're questions that I receive on a regular basis from my clients. So if we could just go ahead and address some of those today, then, then maybe that will even be more of a reason for someone to, to go check out your mini series. That's great, let's do it. All right, so this first one is a little lengthy but I think you'll be able to, to answer it all because it all ties together. Is it right or even Christian to change memories? Aren't they sacred? Isn't that changing reality? Is it a form of denial or lying? And is it something that God would even condone? Mm. Great question. I love it. And I really... Honestly, I love these kind of questions, primarily because these are things I wrestled with incredibly in the beginning of my journey here. So I don't know how much your audience knows about my history. Just very briefly, I ended up being very, very sick, really near death in liver and kidney failure with countless uh, diagnoses of rare autoimmune disorders and diseases. And I'd really come to the end of my rope in a lot of ways. I had tried what I believe to be everything possible that was offered out there. I'd gone the Western medicine route. I had specialists on speed dial on my phone that I was seeing on an almost weekly basis. You know, I really felt like I had done everything now. And I come from a Christian background and perspective. And in fact, at the time, my husband and I were both in the full-time ministry. So I had prayed and studied and fasted and, you know, I had been anointed with oil. I mean, I had done everything, really. I mm -hmm. thought I had covered every base possible. So when I came upon this information, and when I say this information, what I really mean is our mind-body connection and how I really believe that dictates pretty much the outcome of whatever we are having as an outcome in our life. And when I came upon this information, and in the beginning, it was in the form of tapping, which I think your audience probably is familiar okay. with the form, tapping. I personally don't do what is considered tapping any longer, but I found it to be an incredible resource in the beginning okay. for me. So to answer your question, um, when I first stumbled upon this information, though I immediately saw its relevance and it became so like, okay, this makes a lot of sense to me. Then I also applied it and it worked incredibly in my life. I was not going to move one iota further if it didn't match up to the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I went home and I studied and I studied and I got a lot of advice and I really went deeply into this. So from that perspective, I love these questions because I really do feel like I have done a lot of the footwork on this and wrestled. And that's kind of where I, I am today is really being able to stand on a platform where I do feel like this is biblically based. So if, if you don't mind, um, obviously someone coming from a Christian perspective is likely going to be using the Bible as a reference. Mm -hmm. That my reference point for what I believe to be an absolute truth. 
So, so I would like to answer that question with a few scriptures. Certainly. So one of the ones um, that, so to address your first question, is it right or Christian to, to change memories? So clearly, uh, if you know, you've read any really of the New Testament, you'll become familiar with the word repentance. And that is one of the things Jesus came preaching. I mean, one of his biggest messages, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near, right? Uh -huh. This is what we see. John the Baptist was preparing the way and was doing a baptism of repentance. Repentance is this incredible theme throughout the entire New Testament. It's also very metaphorically represented in the Old Testament, but specifically New Testament, we see that word. If you look at the Greek of that word, it is metanoia, which is to change the mind. And this is a mind change, not like, I think I'm going to wear the red shoes. No, no, no. <laughs> Definitely the blue shoes. No, not that kind of change of mind. It's the kind of change of mind where it's that it's so, what you believed to be true before is so untrue now that it's as if it never could have been true. Wow. That's really the kind of change of mind that, that, that is represented. Now, from depending on how you come from your Christian background, repentance sometimes leaves a nasty taste in people's mouth. And that's because it's been maybe misrepresented. For me personally, repentance is this incredible gift. And everyone has it actually. We were all created to be able to change our mind. So one truth, because it's our truth from our experience, may be very real to us, but that doesn't make it true or mm -hmm. real in this absolute state, right? So repentance is this theme in the Bible, and it does mean to change one's mind. So when we say about this changing memories, now again, I'm, uh, to me, changing memory is something we can do, but it's not really where I hang my hat in my practice with mm -hmm. my um, really, I'm looking uh, to change beliefs. And I think that that's the message of the cross, is that we're able to change. We believed one thing before, and now we believe something different. But that doesn't happen just once. That's a continual process. We get the gift of repentance on a daily basis. That's a gift. That's something uniquely, as it's not that Christians are the only ones that can change their mind. We just know why we're doing it and who actually gives us that ability. So we're able to give credit where credit's due. And that I think is really important. So is it biblical to change our mind? I'd say, yeah, foundational, actually. <laughs> foundational. I think to not change your mind is not acceptable, right? So I just want to just look at a scripture really quick. Um, if you look in Philippians 4, 8. So I'm just going to pull that one up as well. Okay. Um, I'm using the NIV translation just for th those people out there who might be looking at a different translation. But one of the things that, that is said here is finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, worthy, think about such things. So this is one of those things. If you read this from this sort of black and white perspective, then does that mean nothing bad has ever happened to us? Like we're never even supposed to think anything negative? Because that would be, I, I believe that you had mentioned in there, are we telling ourselves a lie? Are we uh -huh. in some form of denial? If you really think that the only thing you can ever think about and that like, you know, oh, nothing bad is ever happening. Nothing, that is, that's actually denial. That's a complete denial. But what the real message here is where our focus lies. And that we can, if we look, we can change our perspective if we take it from a biblical perspective or from knowing that we are loved incredibly by the creator of the universe, then wow, it, that changes our perspective. That really can change our mind. But it is something that needs to happen. Um, another scripture that I think is really relevant is in Matthew. Um, 
and we're gonna, I'll talk about a few others that, that answer this question retroactively as well. But um, Matthew 23, and this is, let's see, down in verse 25. So this is really interesting because we, and your viewers will know, one of the strongest approaches or reactions that we see that Jesus ever has is to the Pharisees, which were the teachers of the law, the religious people at the time, right? Those who had claimed to have this um, unique relationship or insight into, into God and his word. And he says, verse 25, woe to the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, you hypocrites, you clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they're full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, then the outside will also be clean. And it goes on for there. And so what does it mean to be cleaned on the inside? This, that word cleaned, that's not a, and you know, if you have a home, <laughs> I don't get to just clean it once, right? Like, no. I wish, oh my goodness, I wish. But no, I have to clean it daily, daily, daily. This is an action word here. And it does involve part of my process, something that on my part, what I'm doing to clean up. Now, God gives us that ability. That is nobody but his to give us. But it is there for the taking. For those of us who, well, we need to clean up our minds. We, the, we need to be the gatekeeper of our thoughts and of our minds. So I think that that's really important. So again, there's other scriptures that really, there's the renewing of our mind, taking captive every thought, which we'll address maybe as things go along here. But, you know, there are so, my problem is there's so many scriptures. We could be in a like 30 day Bible study together <laughs> on how the Bible supports this and encourages this rather than the other way around. And you have alluded on this a little bit, but I'd like to go ahead and jump straight to this one. Um, doesn't God do the healing? And how is this of God if I'm the one doing it? Oh, I love this. Such a great question. Now, I could jump easily to James of, you know, like, faith without deeds is dead, right? But I mean, that's more of an obvious thing. Like I'm hoping we all are in agreement that there is, there is action on our part in this process. Faith is, we see faith best in action and in our faithful responses to things. So there is a call to action for us, but it is, it, the call to action is this freedom that we're allowed to take part in. The fact that I can change my mind, no matter how I was raised, no matter what I've experienced, the fact that I can think differently, that I can let go of abandonment, abuse, those different things, and, and literally not just see it different, feel it different, know it different. If that's not a gift from God, like, I don't know what is. That is the freedom that I think is in Christ. But there are really specific and wonderful scriptures. So um, one that comes to mind is John 5. So let me... Let me look, pull that up really quick. Um, John chapter five. So, okay, one of the things that I did, obviously coming from a perspective of having illness, was I researched healing because that is another really strong and it's an undeniable theme of the New Testament is Jesus equaling healing, mm -hmm. right? Now, we very quickly think of um, physical healing, but there was a lot of other sorts of healing happening there as well. But we do see a lot of physical healing. So I love this one because this is the healing at the pool, right? And this is at the, um, the, the gate in Bethesda. And you've got the guy that there's a bunch of disabled people that, that sit around this pool. And they believe the pool has healing powers, right? And you've got this guy there who'd been an invalid for 38 years, right? Sitting by the pool. And I love it in verse six, John five, verse six, Jesus comes up to him and says his first words to this man, do you want to get well? And I was like, 
wait, I have a choice in the matter, <laughs> right? Wait, are you asking, because wouldn't we say, 38 years, this guy's been sitting there, and like, obviously we, we have um, compassion for the disabled in our world today, but then that even the pennies that come from people were these people's livelihood, the scraps, I mean, this was, this was not an easy time, and this, this man was clearly disabled. Jesus says, do you want to get well? Our first reaction is, uh, duh. Like, why would you ask him that? Mm -hmm. Well, good question. Why would he? Because it is our choice. That is that pres pesky free will thing that is we love and at the same time is so hard and so confusing. This man, Jesus asks him, do you want to get well? which made me realize, whoa, there's a lot of personal responsibility here. And I had to ask myself, do I wanna get well? Because what I know, and you know as well, a lot of the times, not consciously, but subconsciously, these things are keeping us safe. For this man, this may be the only way he has ever been able to get food or care was because this, knowing that because he has this condition, he got the scraps. He's not skilled, he's 38, and we're talking old, you know. What's he gonna do now? What's he gonna do now, right? Who am I gonna be if I'm not the disabled guy at the, you know, pool of Bethesda? <laughs> so these are those subconscious minds. Now that man is not sitting there verbalizing those things or probably consciously thinking them, but Certainly. he is consciously. And Jesus is like, hey, you, when you want it, when you, say that you want it and we and i'm saying then put all of that fear and all that worry and all those unknowns into my hands this is faith that's the faith part of it but we have to make that movement forward okay so your question is doesn't god do the healing god offers the healing lays it out there that's the gift right grace is the gift we have to take part of that we have to take part in it by accepting it so I always use the example because people get like, oh, the faith and the works and like it's our little, you know, religious panties in a, sorry, <laughs> twist. <laughs> but, um, but we have to realize like if I gave you, I'm not sure if you're a Starbucks fan, but if I gave you a, you know, thousand dollar Starbucks gift card, you might be like, oh, this is a great gift. But until you take that thing in, lay it on the counter and order your drink. Wait, did you have to earn your Starbucks? No, I'm not gonna use it, I had to earn it, I had to do something for it. Wait, is that gonna be your response? No, of course, you know it's been given to you as a gift, but we do have to choose it, we have to choose life. No, you know that scripture, right? I've set before you blessings and curses, life, death, choose love, or, sorry, choose life, which I think is love, the fact that we get that choice. So. The healing does go to God because he's the one that gave the gift, right? That is there, but we still have to make the choice. And I'm not saying that Jesus is, do you want to get well? You know, that's his question to the man. Now the man gives a bunch of excuses, right? If you keep reading, it's a great thing to read. Yeah, but yeah, but, and Jesus is like, you know, if you, if you want to get well, let's just do this. Here's what you need to do. Pick up your mat and walk, go. So there's, there's action involved. And I think that the beauty of that is that, yes, God gets the glory for the healing, but we get to partner in it with him. It's a relationship. A, 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 this whole thing is about a relationship with God. He doesn't want us to see him as this, like, it's not this ruler over his people kind of thing. It's a loving relationship. He wants, he's like, hey, we can do this together. I've already given, I've already said yes. Do you want it? Mm. And all those things that you're afraid of, give those to me as well. I'll take those too. So I think yes. And clearly there's, there's another great one in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 3.20. Just reference that. Go look up that. Um, does the, are we the ones doing the healing? No, but we are the ones taking it. Like it would be like, you know, I've got cancer and there's, you know, someone's got the, the cure. And, but I have to go actually do what they say. If they're like, take this. I could be like, wow, that's amazing. Thank you. If I never take it, guess what? There's no cure there. Mm -hmm. I don't 
cure for cancer is in a pill, by the way. I'm just using an analogy. But, mm -hmm. you know, you get what I'm saying. Yes. So, yes. Yes. But I will tell you a little secret caveat to this, this question, though it's a great question, is often if we realize, we get scared with this because we're like, whoa, if it's in my hands to make a choice, that's where we start to think about ourselves. And then we bring up all of our shortcomings, mm -hmm. all of our perceived failures, and we're, that, fear, that scares us. So then we hold ourselves back because of us, but it isn't us that gives that option it's god we just have to accept it so hopefully that makes sense yes yes thank you for offering your time to us today heather it is my absolute pleasure and thank you for the time you put into this book and the next one absolutely i'm really excited for the next one to come out too and i will have all the information on heather's books the mini series at the end of this video. Thank you again, Heather. My pleasure. Thank you, Kim. And Heather and I thank all of you for watching with us today. Remember, no matter what you've experienced in the past, today is a new day. You really do have the ability to change your mind. Consider giving yourself permission to do so. You really are worth it. See you next time.